Okay, it's a Seat Compact Pro. Um, there you go. There's a little bit of a heat signature there for my hand. It'll, uh, it's pretty sensitive. So it's on uh, auto scaling, I guess. And I'm going to turn on my fridge. I've been away for uh, a week. It's a little grainy right now. Uh, we don't have a large temperature differential right now. And uh, there's a lot of reflective polyiso here. But uh, look at that. It's already starting to... Uh, warm up quick now it's not warm enough to even really feel yet but uh it's definitely warmer than the surrounding environment wow <laughs> that doesn't take long you know for the first few seconds to you know even up to a, a minute or two there's probably just hot gas flowing through that until uh it starts to back up uh through the uh the cap tube but uh now there's uh emissivity differences here this is shiny copper you can see the reflection in my hand. You can see kind of a crappy reflection there in the poly ISO. It's, it's a little uh, ripply. Um, but uh, that's pretty neat. Kind of cool to see. Um, here you can see the, uh, the difference. I, I should probably focus this a little bit. There we go. Uh, this is the brass fitting down here. Brass T, quarter inch flare and then copper inch line coming out of it. That's where the black paint starts. So that's why it shows up so much uh, warmer, even though it, it really isn't. But um, as far as the black body goes, it, it shows up a lot warmer because we're set at emissivity of about 0.97 right now. So it's pretty cool. Um, if I narrow the band a little bit, once this thing uh, comes to some, some sort of an equilibrium, um, I probably should should be able to show some subcooling. Um, here in a short time though, uh, you'd be able to see that the top loop from this uh, discharge off the compressor, and about the top loop will be a good bit brighter and hotter than the rest of it. Um, we should be able to see on the suction line that it's cooler. Now that's not painted black or anything, but, um, um, oh, and then the copper tubing here is, or the cap tube. Oh, I can feel a temperature difference there, so I'm going to be able to see it as well. Um, thermostat hasn't been running very much, but there is a warm spot that shows up there. So, it's pretty cool. Um, compressor's still showing pretty cool, um, but after it runs for a while, that thing will get uh, red hot, as far as the thermal camera is concerned. Um, yeah, so, pretty neat. Uh, while that thing warms up a little bit, um, this is a 1947 GE, I think it's a 47, and it actually just kicked on here a few minutes ago. Uh, that really bright one down there, that's a discharge line, and then the, uh, the compressor itself, it's a horizontal, not a compressor, external springs. You see some of its uh, air-cooled condenser up there, and I get it in the right spot, should be able to see the fan flutter a little bit. Door is hanging wide open right now. I'm, I'm messing with the, uh, the thermostat on the evaporator. So uh, you can see the dark black. Like I said, it hasn't been running very long, and it will satisfy up to the the headers here, the header tank, and it'll get nice and dark up there to almost almost to the top one for the uh, suction line. So as that runs. Uh, but of course the door is open right now so um, it's not going to flood as well but uh, it will it, it'll catch up the thing uh, uh run up to the highest setting was down at about 24 degrees this morning so this is all frosted up right now so so it's kind of a neat tool for refrigeration this kind of stuff i mean i haven't really made a lot of use out of it yet because for the most part you can tell where it's where it's flooding to or what, what's frosted but uh, it's still really fun. And it teaches you a lot with the different surface materials. Um, there's the uh, capacitor and the whole start system electrical there. And then we see the condenser there. The lines. Yeah. Pretty nifty. So I'm going to shut that up. And then uh, 
I'm not going to fire it up right now, but we have a 1935 monitor top that I'll do another time. Did these videos the other day. They were kind of neat. neat. And uh, then I realized my GPS location was on every frame. And I just didn't think that was wise, so I took them down. So, uh, but I spent the last week playing with it in Pennsylvania. It was a lot of fun. Got some cool picks. Saw some neat things. Remember that starting to warm up. Compressor still running pretty cool. And then the interior of the fridge. I'm going to show a whole lot right now. Because that's a glycol tank right there. But you can see the cold. Uh, which I can see that's where the cap tube comes in. There's a flare there. It's pretty cold. Um, yeah, and then some of the coil is, is uh, some of the evaporator coils on the bottom of the glycol tank there. So that's going to cool first. Uh, a lot of this is stainless steel, so it's going to show some reflections. Really, really good reflections. I gotta let it run for a bit. But uh, yeah, it lights up like Christmas lights. Um, something else kind of neat. I got uh, four four foot fluorescent tube fixture, uh, but three of them are LEDs. I originally intended for all four to be LEDs, but they didn't want to. Uh, they wouldn't run. They would flicker, and it seemed the only way to get the thing to work right was to put a uh, single fluorescent tube in there, see if you can tell which one it is. So, um, it's noticeably warmer, uh, I mean, considerably. I mean, these LEDs hardly get warm at all, and this one gets quite toasty, the fluorescent there. And then, once I move over here and get that other one, that fluorescent out of frame, it readjusts the temperature range so that, you know, that although they appear warmer, if I were to change the settings on this, it's the Pro model, you'd be able to see, but having one as a reference LED and one as a fluorescent, um, you know, it appears warmer and, and that's accurate. So anyway, um, there's a lot of other cool things I want to do with it, but I just thought I got to get a couple of videos up here so you can see that's, um, that is 50 feet of quarter inch copper tubing and serves as the condenser. Um, I think anybody who's been on my channel before has probably seen this damn thing. I haven't touched it in a couple of months. I've been on some other projects, but, uh, I'll be getting back into it here soon. So um, I guess that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Oh, um, here's another thing I forgot. I do need to fix this. We do have a hot electrical connection right there. Slightly warmer, but I mean, it's, since I actually can see it, I should tear it apart and fix it. Um, this copper tubing, it's, uh, I think it's three, it's probably five sixteenths actually. Um, there's a reflection coming off that condenser that's behind me. So, you know, it appears warm. Um, but there's a little bit of water condensate on this uninsulated suction line. So, um, and it is cool. It is cool coming back. So that's all got to be sealed up. So, and I also noticed <clears throat> playing around with it. Once this compressor really warms up, the center of it does get a little bit warmer than the sides. One more shot at the evaporator. Now the door's been closed for, whoop, she just shut off. All right. Well, thanks for watching.